When we talk about domestic violence, we talk about the survivors a lot, but we also must mention those who lend a helping hand in times of need. Just after 8 a.m. on August 27th, in a parking lot in Arlington Heights, Kyla Davis helped a woman make a desperate escape, and this is why she's making Chicago proud. What's the address? Emergency. Can you get out of the parking lot? I'm on here, but he's gonna find me. I'm sending you towards the police department, yeah. but I'm gonna keep you on the phone, okay? I okay. And here to tell us more about that eventful day is Kyla Davis. Kyla, your efforts and what I just listened to right now literally gave me chills for a number of reasons but I want you to take me back to that day and tell me you were just in a parking lot what was happening right before you even called 911 for you to do that I was just getting out of my car about to approach my friend's house to go do her here before she went to labor um, so I just saw two people standing outside of their car or outside of a car talking to each other. And as I got out of my car, I walked over to the passenger seat to get a bag out of my car. The lady ran off and she just yelled out for help. And that's when I called out and just said, stop. And as I called on the office and yelled from the stop, that's when I saw the knife and I went and got back in my car and called the police. And when you called 911, just the fact that you even got involved, what was that just your natural instinct to call 911? It was. It was. I knew that I, I, if I didn't see the knife, honestly, me being me, I probably would have tried to go and help her. Um, but when I saw the knife, I knew that I was defenseless against the knife. So that's why I decided to call 911. But it was just a natural instinct. It was something that I didn't think twice about. Right. And when you call 911, and we just heard part of the tape there, and that's, by the way, so incredibly brave of you. What was going Thank through you. your mind once this woman hopped in your car? Now she's in your hands and you're on the phone with 911, but yet you see the man with the knife behind you. What was going through your mind at that time? I didn't want him to stab her. I just, I wanted the police to get there as soon as possible. I wanted everybody to be okay. I just, I didn't want him to stab her. Yeah, you give That's a lot of... Think about. Go ahead. That's all I can think about was just please don't don't hurt this lady in front of me. Just please don't do this. Please don't do this. I just need the police to get there, like fly there if they could. I, it just I wanted to be okay. Right, right. And the nine one one operator told you, you know, because you were saying, "What? Well, what do I do now?" And she's like, "Just come towards us. We got you." But you give her a lot right. of credit too for being so calm in that I kind do. of a situation. Talk about that. I do. Uh, when I, so when I initially called, they answered the phone as peaceful as possible, as always. Uh, and so I, as I'm explaining this lady to my car, she's like, well, go to a public area. And I'm explaining, like, well, we're in a public area. This guy's not afraid of a public area. So lead me to a police station. So then she starts to lead me to a police station. And she's, you know, giving me directions. I had my hazards on already, but she instructed me to put my hazards on if I didn't to make sure I was driving safely, um, try not to speed as much as possible, even though she knew I was nervous. But her just reminding me to be safe in that instance, it, it helped me, it helped, uh, helped me remain calm as well. Right. What would you say, Kyla, to someone else who may be or may find themselves in the same position you were in? You immediately went into action and your instincts kicked in. Why was that so important for you? And then what message would you have to other people who may not be as brave as you? Don't be afraid. Any little thing you do can help. If it's just sitting in your car calling a police officer, taking down a license plate number, taking down the what a person is wearing, don't be afraid to speak up or just yell out, stop it, and just acknowledge the person that's doing wrong that they're being seen. Right, right. Is there anything about that day that you would change? Not at all. Not at all. If anything, I want her phone number. I'm not able to get in contact with her. Um, so if anything, I would want to get in contact with her. But other than that, no, I wouldn't change a thing. That, that was going to be my next question to you is, have you had any contact with this lady whose life you saved? Unfortunately, I haven't. Unfortunately, I have not. She's not been reachable by uh, the police at this time. Okay, but you've you've tried to get in touch with her through the police. We have, yes. Mm -hmm. right. Okay, so no yes. one knows if she's okay or not. 
Right. I know there was a victim service that reached out to her and spoke with her for a while, but after like a few weeks, she did go ghost. So she's probably just taking her time to heal alone. Right, right. And and that healing process definitely um, takes time. You received an award from the Arlington Heights Police Deport Department. How grateful were you for what they did in this situation as well? Very grateful. The fact that they responded on the scene, I mean, there were probably like seven different police officers that showed up to the scene, um, assuring that I was okay, assuring that she was okay. Um, I was afraid to go back to my friend's house after the incident. They took me back that way and uh, drove me there to make sure I was okay going back to my friend's house. Um, I'm very grateful that they responded on time, and they were very grateful to me as well. Right. And I'm sure you've read the articles that I have read in preparation for this interview where it has been reported that the man who was carrying the knife did commit suicide um, that day and had apparently intentions of doing a murder suicide. When you read that yeah. and when you let that sink in, what does that make you feel like that you saved this woman's life? You know, at first I was reluctant to do the video, uh, the interview today in, in regard um, or any other like um, news reports just because I didn't look at myself as a hero. I honestly did it out of instinct. So when I first discovered, when I first got that news in detail was at the city hall meeting, the village hall meeting, and they told me that the victim let them know that the guy said he was going to kill her and then kill himself. And it brought goosebumps to my arms and I literally was in tears because I didn't realize that he had said that. Right. Kyla, you brought me to tears. I'm not going to lie. I read that yesterday and I bawled thank myself. You. Um, thank you for what you did. And of hopefully course. your story is an inspiration for others to, if they see something, anything can possibly help. And in this case, save a life. Thank you so Definitely. much for joining us. Thank you, Val. Absolutely, you. Kyla. And if you or someone you know needs help, call the Illinois Domestic Violence Hotline. Here's the number. It's 877-863-863. 338 or call 877 to end DV. We'll be right back.